What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So as we head towards the holiday season, a lot of people are wondering what Sony will have set up for the end of this year. Well, it does look like one big release that was originally slated for 2021 has now been delayed into next year, and we'll go over that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about Persona, as it looks like a new website has gone live with Atlas teasing a big celebration that could go up to a year long with a ton of different reveals already being teased. And we're also gonna be going over a Smash Bros. like or a Smash Bros clone of a game that was revealed yesterday and people are pretty excited about online. Guys, if you enjoyed these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below and ring that notification bell so you can keep up to date with all the uploads here on the channel. And we're gonna start today with The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD out here in a couple of days. And Nintendo's big marketing strategy appears to be just telling us about different quality of life updates here and there as we head towards its release. And I guess their latest strategy was to tell us about the camera control system at 3 a.m. my time last night. Take a look at this here. This was over on Twitter translated from Japanese. It says, with Skyward Sword HD, you can now rotate the camera freely. How about looking at the world from various angles? If you have two Joy-Cons, you turn the right stick. If you want to operate with the buttons, you have to press L button and then move the right stick around. That was something that people were kind of theorizing, oh, you just have to hold a button down so that the, the game knows you don't want to control the, the sword anymore. You want to start looking around. It could actually have people trying to figure out which way they want to go with it. Do they want to have an easier to control camera, I guess, there with one less button press and use motion controls or just stick with the, the button controls outright and just have to hold a button down. Either way, it, it's cool to see that Nintendo did incorporate this as the original, did not have a controllable camera with like a, a right stick, for example. You would press a button and it would just position the camera immediately behind the link, which led to a lot of kind of jerky motion when it came to the camera. Also, it looks like we have another collaboration for Nintendo and Mario. This one actually taking Mario into the luxury watch space. I did not expect to see this one yesterday. Take a look at this online. It was a full trailer set up. This is from Tag Heuer, and I, I myself am not really into the luxury watch space, but there will be 2,000 units produced here at a price of $2,150. Uh, they'll be up on their website starting July 15th. And it's, uh, I mean, it's an interesting idea, I guess, and there have been different collaborations with characters from media before for like luxury watch brands. From what I can tell online, the disappointment appears to be around the idea of this being a smartwatch, not more of a mechanical watch. And I guess that's more on the side of like collectors who prefer kind of the mechanical uh, watches as opposed to getting a screen that's, you know, the smartwatch sector. Um, I'm curious if you are someone who is into collecting luxury watches or just watches in general, if you can let us know down in the comments if the mechanical watches really are that much more preferred for high-end buyers when it comes to this kind of thing, because if that's the case, it's odd that they would go the route of a smartwatch unless they figured they could do something like that with this Mario collaboration and kind of expand I guess their luxury brand all at once. Oh, and it does look like we could be seeing a beta for Gran Turismo 7. It was originally gonna be coming out this year and originally was a PlayStation 5 only title, got pushed to next year and all of a sudden the PS4 shows up as a platform it's getting released on. But you can see this screenshot here and this was over on GT Planet and we can see it does mention a beta code and this is currently in the experience PlayStation app, which is designed to connect fans with special promotions or as part of live experiences. And after going through kind of a series of steps, you'll get to a screen where you can get a beta code for the PS5 only as it's described, but it is currently a placeholder code that's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and all that. So they don't even have that set up correctly. Now, I wouldn't be surprised to see a beta being run for Gran Turismo 7, as it does take Polyphony a while to develop these, and I'm sure they would want people to try the game out rather than release like a prologue or something as they have done in the past, and then receive feedback that way. When will they do it? Well, honestly, it could happen at any time. So just 
keep an eye out. I'll keep you guys up to date as well for any of you Gran Turismo fans. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with this big PlayStation 5 game delay falling now into 2022. We can head over here. This was tweeted out, Ghostwire Tokyo. We've made the decision to delay the launch of Ghostwire Tokyo to early 2022. We want to get the game in your hands as soon as possible so you can experience the unforgettable version of a haunted Tokyo that we've been hard at work building. At the same time, we're also focused on protecting the health of everyone at Tango. Our new release window will give us time to bring the world of Ghostwire to life as we've always envisioned it. Thank you for being patient as we work to bring you an experience unlike anything else we've ever made. We can't wait to show you more in the coming months. Now this is another game from Bethesda that was set up I guess to be a timed exclusive with PlayStation as we've seen with Deathloop being a timed exclusive also from Bethesda. This one though from Tango Gameworks and I mean, really, I saw this and I said, yeah, I kind of figured that was going to happen because we haven't really heard much at all about Ghostwire Tokyo and we're kind of in July right now. So you figure they would have wanted to show us this game at least a little bit. Maybe instead of Deathloop one time, they could show us Ghostwire Tokyo. So the fact that we could have potentially been three, four months away from release and we didn't really know that much about the game. Yeah, I think the writing was on the wall that this one could fall in the next year. They just made it official uh, here with this Twitter post. And I mean, at this point, Microsoft owns Tango Gameworks and Bethesda and all of this. So it, I guess it would have been Microsoft's call along with Bethesda to do this. And we've seen Deathloop get delayed, now Ghostwire Tokyo. Uh, it's obvious that, yes, what we saw with COVID and remote work continues to have effects in the gaming world. And there were talks, I think a few months ago, that it's something that could continue to pop up as an issue from development going forward for maybe another eight to 10 months. So keep that in mind for any games that still don't have release dates or maybe have just disappeared for a little while now, right? So uh, something to, to think about there as we go forward. But now we kind of look at Sony's overall release lineup for the holiday. They will get help from third parties, right? That's obvious, but like we have Deathloop and like that that's kind of it right now but keep in mind we should have some sort of event from sony we're thinking in august i guess at this point we just had that state of play and all right that was pretty cool i mean we do have kenna or kina however it's pronounced now uh coming up that's another good one but we're thinking of the big first party titles from Sony. It's nice to have these timed exclusives like Deathloop to help hold up uh, the PlayStation brand as they head towards the holiday season, but are they going to be able to have Horizon ready to go for, say, October or November and be their big holiday title? Because if that slips to 2022 and they don't have something else ready, it's going to be kind of a quiet holiday for Sony and the PlayStation 5 when it comes to first party. And that would be kind of strange for like the second holiday for the PS5, because that means that last year, the first holiday would have been better with something like Demon's Souls and Spider-Man and all this. So I'm going to kind of hold off on saying, yeah, this could be a quiet holiday until we get to that state of play that's been rumored in August, because I mean, Sony could show up and start dropping all kinds of stuff and all of a sudden fill up their holiday lineup. Next up, let's talk about Persona and the 25th anniversary that looks like Atlas and Sega are going all out for, at least Right now, it looks like they're going all out. Let's head over here to Gamatsu because they did have a translation set up here on their site for that 25th anniversary site that is now live, where they say, as of 2021, the Persona series has sold over 15 million copies worldwide. To all our fans that have supported us for so long, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And this coming from uh, this coming September, the Persona series will finally celebrate its 25th anniversary. To show our gratitude to everyone, we are preparing a number of celebrations for the Persona 20. 25th anniversary year, which will last for about one year from September 2021 to fall 2022. From 25th anniversary goods and various events to game news and more, we will be making all sorts of anniversary announcements. Please look forward to them. So this is obviously very exciting for Persona fans. I saw a ton of excitement yesterday online because if you look on the website, they have like seven different kind of boxes set up for announcements over the next year. I guess every other month, just about, we're going to have some sort of Persona 25th anniversary related announcement. And I know people are thinking, oh, right, that means seven different games are getting announced. Not necessarily because they say it could be 
other things. For example, could be something with uh, with a show or anime, something there. Could be merchandise, could be a, a high-end figure, you know, like from like first four figures, something like that. Could be a luxury smartwatch. <laughs> I, I do think we're gonna see a whole bunch of games though announced in some way. And based on some of the things they're talking about here, uh, it could of course go back to the original personas and maybe they bring those up and they release it on other platforms. Like they just drop it on the Switch, the PlayStation, the Xbox, uh, PC. We saw Persona 4 Golden make the jump from the Vita to Steam, did very well there. Shocked Atlas, shocked Sega. Seemed pretty straightforward to all of us though. <laughs> so here's hoping that means that they learned, okay, wow, other people want to play these different Persona games. Let's see if anyone wants to try out the original Persona, maybe Persona 2, maybe they move around Persona 3 and they do a collection or just individual releases. I think that would be fine as well, as long as they're priced accordingly and they have some, I guess, quality of life features added in for these remasters. There's just a ton of opportunity here. So I'm concerned that Sega somehow squanders it. That's, that's my biggest issue is it's like, there is a lot of money that they could make here and they could in turn make a lot of people excited and happy, but it's Sega. So I, I don't have a ton of confidence in them to pull this off completely, but hey, we'll see what happens at least. Persona fans get an entire year to speculate and have a lot of fun with hopefully some exciting announcements. Next up, let's talk about Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. And I saw this pop up yesterday online. IGN had the exclusive reel for it and people were pretty excited about this. I mean, it's a bunch of Nickelodeon characters thrown into what looks like a Smash Brothers clone. Uh, let's take a look here, this over at IGN, where they say IGN can exclusively announce Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, a new fighting game featuring characters from SpongeBob SquarePants, Rugrats, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ren and Stimpy, and more. I, I like the idea though of being able to take the Ninja Turtles and the Rugrats and Ren and Stimpy and, and just have them fight it out, knock each other off of platforms. That could be a lot of dumb fun. So I, you know, this could be cool. The brawler, which looks to be similar to Smash Bros in style, will come to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X, S, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch in fall 2021. It's being developed by, I'm gonna say Ludosity and Fair Play Labs and published by Game Mill Entertainment. Now, some concerns here. Uh, Game Mill Entertainment isn't exactly known for publishing the best games. Ludosity did, it'll do too. Uh, which, you know, that was a cool game. And Fair Play Labs made that uh, that G.I. Joe game that came out recently. So I'm not saying this game's gonna be bad because they haven't produced a lot of high quality games in their history, but it's just something to think about, I guess, there. Anyway, there is a list of characters you can see here that uh, includes Helga from Hey Arnold, uh, Zim from Invader Zim, Danny Phantom, SpongeBob, of course, in there, Patrick Starr, Leonardo from the Ninja Turtles, and Michelangelo, Nigel Thornberry. Yes, we're, we're just throwing all the characters in here, and that's kind of how it should be. I believe now we know 20 different characters and, and different levels, and I guess they're going to be showing off more and more characters as we get closer to it. But you know what? Because of how random and all over the place this is, I would prefer that they just keep some characters completely secret and hidden, and you just unlock them when you get the game and try it out, or of course, you get spoiled online. Basically, have some kind of just hidden until the release of the game and just let it go. I mean, I know you want it to be part of marketing and all, but like, we haven't had some of those kind of random unlocks for a while now, right? Really before the internet became as big as it is now and you could just quickly go on your phone and look up, oh, okay, these are all the characters in Smash or any of that. I, I like that idea just because of how random and all over the place uh, this, this roster is, but I'm curious about the quality of this title just based around the development here, so, We'll see as we get closer, I guess, to the fall 2021. It was also mentioned about rollback netcode, and it seems like they're not completely clear cut on that answer, but it will be on supported platforms. That's what was mentioned. So we'll see which, I guess, supported platforms will be getting that. But you know what? Kind of a fun announcement here for this Nickelodeon Smash Brothers clone. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about a big sale that's going on currently for physical media. And I like to keep an eye out for these in particular. I know we see digital sales pop up all the time, but it, it's really cool to be able to get physical games, especially on something like the Switch with first party Nintendo games at a discount. And this one is from Gamefly. And uh, I've, 
it's been kind of off and on with Gamefly when I pick games up there, but I have noticed you can usually go through checkout and it'll tell you if you're getting like the manual and the case and all of this with the cartridge or the disc. Uh, so for this one, you just want to keep an eye out for that. But some of the discounts here are pretty good. We're just going to go through some of the pages here up on screen and I'll go through a few suggestions that I picked out here, starting with Watch Dogs Legion at $10. Project Cars 3 also at $10. 13 while it's not a great uh, remake of the game itself. They have been patching it and it's at $13. So if you want a bit of a nostalgia trip uh, at a pretty discounted rate there, 13 bucks isn't bad. RE Village down to $38. Mass Effect Legendary Edition, which was already a phenomenal deal at 60, now down to $40 there. Falconeer at 11. New Pokemon Snap at $40. And this is one I thought I saw that came with everything. So $20 off there for a, a Pokemon game now is pretty good. Harvest Moon One World at $20. Pikmin 3 Deluxe at $35. Paper Mario at $35. And Persona 5 Strikers at $30. And there's still a ton of other games to go through here. So feel free to leave any of your own suggestions down in the comments if you spot any games that are heavily discounted here. I just like to bring these different sales up, especially if it's physical games and first party Nintendo games that are being marked down because you don't see that too often as it is. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're taking a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday where I asked the original Skyward Sword got a 93 on Metacritic with the improvements coming with the new one. Do you think it will score higher than the original? 72% said no, the game will get the same or a lower score. And then 28% said yes, it looks like a lot of issues have been fixed. And if you go back through the reviews, yes, it got a 93 when Skyward Sword came out, but a lot of issues were brought up or around kind of the, the setup of the game, the motion controls, all these other things. And now that there are more options when it comes to button controls, the camera being moved around, auto save features, more streamlined parts of the game. It does seem like a lot of those problems have been ironed out and it brings up the idea of should a remaster score higher than the original if a lot of those issues were fixed. And that's hard to say because the game would then be entering a time where, I mean, standards go up, of course, around different games, and it's graded more on the current time rather than back when the original game released. So I guess we'll find out. I assume the review embargo should be lifting here in the next day or so, and we'll see how this one scores. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day, as you're seeing here. This is from SCJ saying, in terms of the Judgment series, if the actor and his talent group don't want the game on PC, why can't Sega introduce a new main character in the same universe for the third game? They just did that last year with Yakuza Like a Dragon. I'm sure they could work something out to where they create like a whole new plot and just get rid of this character completely. I almost wonder if they would think about just replacing the character outright. Like it's, hey, the, either Judgment ends or we replace the character like they did with Peter Parker in the Spider-Man game. That's all a bit of pushback, but this one has an obvious reason. It's like either you get Judgment with this new character or you don't get it at all. And I think a lot of people would be okay with that because Sega would be kind of have their hand forced at that point. But I guess we'll see what happens. I'm hoping they can work it out and they can continue on with this series because a lot of people really enjoyed that first judgment. And it seems like there is a ton of potential to have kind of this, uh, this Yakuza turn-based series running alongside of judgment. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys hit that like button really helps out. If not hit the dislike, leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today, whether it's the Ghostwire Tokyo delay into 2022. Are you surprised or were you kind of expecting it at this point? Also, what about the Nickel Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, the idea of a Smash Brothers game with all the Nickelodeon characters in it. Let me know what you think about that. And then Persona's big 25th anniversary. What do you want to see over the course of the next year with all these announcements lined up? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.